We would describe Pinecone Edo as the, the long-term memory for AI models, right? Explain what Pinecone does. Provides exactly that. I mean, uh, when, when uh, uh, we think about AI models as uh, being smart, they might not be very knowledgeable. And uh, if you see all the uh, issues that people have had with what's called hallucinations, basically AI models giving very smart sounding answers, but with wrong information, uh, that is solved by equipping them with long-term memory, which is uh, provided by Pinecone. Interesting timing, $100 million round, a $750 million valuation. You, you did a much smaller round a sort of a year ago. How difficult was it to raise those funds and why did you raise the fund? It wasn't difficult at all. The, in fact, the, the fact that uh, virtual databases really asserted themselves as a critical piece of generative AI and the ability to do that uh, at scale and correctly uh, and uh, Pinecone being the leader in that space, uh, it made that uh, a no-brainer, to be honest. Uh, and so it was, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, needed for us to really fuel the, the future research and development and, and future uh, investment in the field. You know, we're covering AI on, on more than a daily basis here on the show, right? And we're talking to those that are working on foundational models, VCs that are investing in the technology. We kind of break it down to data prep, deep learning, and then inference. Where does yep. Pinecone sit within that development cycle? Well, it's, it's sort of a different component altogether. Uh, this is about... Uh, search and retrieval and access to your long-term memories. If you are trying to build a generative AI on your own company data and you want your, uh, and you want your uh, application to not hallucinate or make gross mistakes, uh, then you have to equip it with, with that capability. And that's what Primecone provides. Uh, that could be either on training side or data cleaning or uh, in production at real time or customer facing. Uh, this happens everywhere up and down the stack. It's just a whole different component. And in some sense, doubling down on what I said before, this is the realization that this is a critical piece and that it's here to stay was exactly what catalyzed both uh, the round and the valuation. You have customers like Shopify, HubSpot, Zapier, and Gong. Interesting names. In layman's terms, what is it you're doing for them? When, um, when large language models um, uh, process text, they don't uh, uh, save it or represent it in the same way. And when you want to search for uh, data. When a large language model searches for data, they don't search uh, through it with a regular search engine like you would and I would like search on Google, but in a very different pattern. And that pattern is support, supported by Pinecone. And so if, uh, you know, if you're on Gong and you want to see what the some salesperson, uh, you know, uh, offered some discount for some customer, uh, that's much easier to do with the large language model uh, searching through the data with, with Pinecone than with keyword search, for example, right? Uh, same uh, goes for Shopify, who built a, a uh, shopping assist app very quickly uh, with those capabilities, uh, surfacing the actual information about their products and so on, uh, although the, the customer's products. Um, you know, it's it's really retrieval and, and search in the way that AI models expect them to happen. Um, and uh, that really uh, powers very power, very new kinds of applications, uh, especially right. where hallucinations is something that you really uh, try very strong to avoid. Ido, is there a risk that the pool of data is finite, that it just runs out for training foundational models? I'm not sure what you mean by that, to be honest. Like, that, so there's that we a debate. We are well, unable. Okay. Well, there's a debate from industry participants, right? There are lots of data inputs uh, that go into training generative AI tools, right? Uh, if you take, for example, uh, Google and Bard, they clearly have an advantage in the data 
that they are able to draw on to train that model. Others have less access, especially those that are training models where there are far fewer parameters and inputs. I, I guess my question is, you know, how are you helping and make data available and what the risk is that there is not sufficient access to data to train future models? So, um, first of all, I don't think that that is, that is a serious risk uh, for training better, better models, because I think we have uh, scarcely uh, uh, tapped the, the, the you know, single percents of what's, what's available out there. But, um, but what Pinecone allows you to do is actually make your AI models a lot more accurate and a lot more actionable without retraining them, which is, I think, why it has been so successful and why we ramped up thousands of customers, even just in Q1. Uh, because, you know, with the large language model, even without it being retrained, if it's given the right context and the right information right. from which to construct the answer, then you, you don't have to bake into the model all the data in your company. You just have to present it to the model at the query time. Say, hey, you know, uh, I want to I want to see whether this customer was offered a, right. a, a discount. And here are, you know, 20 right. snippets of text that I think contain the answer. Can you just steal that from that and, and give it to me in a, in a reasonable way? That's a much easier right. problem and a much more manageable uh, solved problem to solve. 